there are two different important expected values that arise when you have two random variables and those two expected values are known as the population covariance and the population correlation. We'll begin with the population covariance. The population covariance measures the strength of the linear relationship between two random variables and that word linear is in all caps because there could be other relationships between X and Y. For example, X and Y might be exponentially related to one another or there might be a quadratic relationship between X and Y. The population covariance and in fact the population correlation also only measure the strength of a linear relationship between two random variables. So here is the definition of the population covariance. Let X and Y be random variables with finite population means mu sub X and mu sub Y respectively. The population covariance between X and Y is the covariance of X and Y is the expected value of X minus its population mean times Y minus its population mean. Now this particular notation COV of X and Y is not universal. Some other authors will use sigma XY, you'll see that occasionally, and also COV may not be spelled out and might be abbreviated as just capital C of XY. But we will stick with this particular notation here in the notes and also in the textbook. This definition is symmetric about its arguments. That is COV of XY is equal to COV of YX and that's simply because these two arguments in the expected value operator are multiplied so if they are interchanged you will still get the same value. This defining formula is useful for co conceptualizing the population covariance. Let's say X and Y tend to be more often on opposite sides of their means together. Then the population covariance is negative. In other words, if X tends to be above its mean, this will be positive, while Y is below its mean, so this term will be negative, the expected value of their product will tend to be negative. Likewise, if X is below its mean while Y is above its mean, again, you get a negative times a positive, and that is a population covariance, which is negative. On the other hand, if X and Y tend to be on the same sides of their mean together, for example, if it's the case when X is above its mean, Y also tends to be above its mean, then you get a positive population covariance. Likewise, if X is below its mean when Y tends to be below its mean, now we have a negative times a negative, which is a positive. I ran out of room on this slide, but here are two more bullets. What are the units on the covariance? Well, its units will be the units of X times the units of Y. And the second thing here what is the interpretation of the covariance of X and X? If you look at this definition, that'll be the expected value of X minus mu X times X minus mu X. And you know that that expected value of X minus mu X squared will turn out to be the population variance. So this population covariance collapses to the um, population variance when X and X are used as arguments.